What's going on guys? Welcome back. For those of you guys who have been following my journey developing this Tesla Model 3 Performance as a track car, well, this is not going to be a video about that. While we are headed home from an HPDE at Summit Point, today was more about learning than it was about filming. We had a fantastic instructor who was also a customer of ours, shout out Vincent. So today's video is going to be for the numbers nerds like myself. I recently set out to take as much weight out of this car as I could without making it look like a cut up pile of junk. We were able to get some fantastic results while spending almost nothing. Now, this isn't going to be the most fun video I've ever made, but I wanted to share with you guys nonetheless, just in case any of you guys are going down the same road as I am tracking your Model 3 performance. With that said, I hope you guys enjoy, and if you see anything that I missed weight reduction-wise, make sure you let me know in the comments. So you are probably asking yourself why we are at Home Depot at 6 in the morning. Well, we are going after some low-hanging fruit. First order of business, rear seat delete. Now that is going to allow us to kill like four birds with two and a half stones. One, it's gonna let us drop some weight hopefully two and even more importantly it's hopefully gonna allow us to throw a full set of wheels in the back to take the track events we should have to hunt down some decent light strong flexible material hopefully something like that exists alex had some carpeting left over from his upholstery days that we're gonna use so let's see what we can find i think this stuff is gonna suit pretty well it's an eighth inch thick pretty flexible pretty strong they do have the same thing in 316s, but i don't quite think that's gonna be necessary all right we are out with a grand total of $15 spent. We have a two hour ride to the shop, so I will see you guys there. All right, first order of business, I suppose, is to get this rear seat out. From what I read, these just come out with those little guys right there. Push it that way, pops up. So we do have these little connectors here. I'm not sure what exactly they're for, but word on the street is they do not cause any errors when you leave them disconnected. As you might imagine, this guy not too heavy i think the real weight from this is going to come with some of the hardware the seat belts and those foldable seat backs we're just going to tuck these connectors up through the plastics obviously everything we do today i need to be completely reversible this isn't you know some five thousand dollar car we're cutting up it's a sixty thousand dollar tesla so in the event we want to trade it in get a new one whatever it's got to be able to revert 100 percent back to stock next order of business seat backs i am actually gonna have to play around with these for a minute to see how these come out as for the sides it looks like these just yep also again not heavy as a general rule of thumb with seats and cars if it doesn't fold or move it's really not going to be much more than plastic and foam So the seat backs, you just unbolt there at the side, and there you go. So the center seat belt is actually integrated in to this driver's seat back. So we're gonna have to go ahead and take it off right there. So this is really where we start to see some gains. I will weigh these pieces individually, but this thing is not light. If I had to put a guess on that section alone, I'd say maybe 20 pounds. So if you do disconnect those seat belts, it looks like it's going to give you an airbag light. So again, it comes down to if you want to deal with that warning, that little light. Once I get to the point of doing these aftermarket seats, uh, if I can't fix that light, I will go ahead and rip them out. But for now, I'd rather not deal with the light. So that thing I said about leaving these seat belt buckles in there. Yeah, about that. As I'm trying to tuck these guys in there, find a convenient spot for them. Wanting to take them out just got the best of me it's probably a pound at best but i figured out how to do it all you need is a security t9 torx So what this thing does, it's just a little sensor there that senses when somebody has a seatbelt plugged in. This guy clicks down, it registers that there's somebody in there. So all we need is this black little piece here. Yes, we could probably accomplish the same thing with some combination of resistors, but we already have this. Your best bet's probably to stick this guy back together so you don't lose any of the parts. That way, when and if it is time to put this car back to stock, you have everything needed to do so. So this is what you're left with. And because we did that, this is what we get to get rid of. Is this incredibly excessive? Yes. My theory when it comes to weight loss, if you pay attention to the little stuff like this all across the car, it adds up. I was gonna wait to the end to weigh everything, but I'm gonna go ahead and weigh this and see if I just took all that time for less than a pound. Take these guys, plug them in, and we're just gonna tuck them somewhere where we can forget they exist. So we're gonna move on to the trunk. There's a lot of stuff in here that we simply don't need either. Well, I don't wanna get rid of anything down there, though this is out just so we can see what's underneath of it. And I do wanna keep this area fully carpeted. That 
doesn't bother me so much. You know, I'm in here scrounging up every ounce I can find on this Tesla and a real race car decides it wants to pull up. Hey, bud. As per usual, put in the comments, tell Alex he sucks for selling this thing because this car is so awesome. One area we're actually able to pull out a decent bit of weight was from the bottom of this panel. You can just see there's metal under there. If I'm going ahead and put weight on it, it's still very secure. However, it had this fairly heavy foam pad underneath of it. This is something we certainly do not need. Again, I'm gonna go get a quick weight on this just so I can possibly make myself feel better about how I'm choosing to spend my Saturday. Needless to say, I will take that all day. This certainly provides no support for anything you might put back there. It is simply sound deadening. All right, we are taking a quick break from the sound deadening. Fortunately, it does come off pretty easy. Unfortunately, doesn't really weigh that much. We'll see how much we have total when we're done and reserve judgment for then. While I was taking a break, I started digging around the car a little more and went to pull the rear seat belts out. They're up under here. Rather than pulling everything out, everything off, I kind of pulled these panels back, lifted this one up, and finagled a 13 millimeter socket in there, hit it, and got it up and out. Unfortunately, these are pre-tension. I haven't ran across that in a rear seat belt before, but Tesla. So we're left with two options. Either leave them in or figure out resistors. Alex has my good multimeter, so I can't get an accurate ohm reading on them, but we're going to have to figure that out sooner than later. And while this stuff may not add up to a significant amount of weight, we are starting to accumulate a good bit of foam and sound deadening. Pretty much every piece of carpet back here has some kind of sound deadening on the bottom of it that I don't need. All right, so all that sound deadener is off. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. All you need, a heat gun and a little pry tool like that. As you can see, we had a couple pieces back here, a couple pieces under the side panels. And then of course we did have some in the actual trunk. As far as the back of the car, the trunk area, this is as far as we're gonna take it. I'm gonna vacuum all that stuff out, put it back together, and then see where we're at weight-wise. Before we get a total on the rear end parts, I do wanna get some individual weights. First up, rear seat belts. Let's see if that effort was worth it. Whole deal, almost seven pounds. Not bad. Any of these pretension seat belts are going to be slightly heavier than the non pretension kind. Now we have the most tedious part of this whole ordeal for what I presume is one of the lowest returns. I'll take two pounds. Not bad. Considering the box weighs an ounce or two, uh, we'll call it even two pounds for, I don't know, an hour's work. And now I guess let's go ahead and weigh these seats. This is the lighter of the two backrests. Now this is the monstrosity of the backrests. This thing is heavy. Right at 24 pounds. We have two of these guys, call it two pounds. Last but not least, the seat bottom, 15. Let's throw it all on the scale, see where we stand. Rear seats alone, 55 total. So if you have a reason to take them out or it doesn't bother you, there's definitely some gains to be had there. This is gonna be kind of our keep bin. This is gonna be the stuff that is going in the trash. Each of those bins weighs about a pound and a half in that box, a couple ounces. So we have to knock off, say, call it four pounds on the high side. That still puts us at an honest 85 pounds. All right, guys, we are back in the shop. We're trying to find time to finish up this rear seat delete, trying to work it in where we can. And I had a second this afternoon to knock out the rear template. So this is what we're working with. I'm going to use these original rear seat mounting brackets as some type of a tie down for whatever I'm putting in the back here. You can see that this is kind of a difficult design specifically because some of the structure that we have here. We just can't bring this all the way over and have a nice clean surface there. So my plan at the moment is to take our mock-ups here, replicate them out of the material you saw us buy earlier in the video, fully carpet that, and then we're going to leave some hanging off the side. A good bit of excess actually in hopes that we can cover the rest of this with the extra. Essentially, there will just be a foot of extra material coming off the side of this upper piece. We'll go ahead and lay it down over here, try to seal it behind this weather strip. That way it covers all this stuff. I'm not too worried about this stuff being protected because this area is never actually gonna see any kind of force, any kind of thing sitting on it. We're gonna go ahead and start with the back first since that's a little easier to describe. Just for reference, we've been using rib nuts this whole time. Every connection point is gonna use one of these. As for the rear, one there, 
one in the same spot over there. Those actually got placed in the factory holes where there was like little push pins holding this rear deck shelf down. As for the bottom of the back, below each one of these anchors here, we did another one. One there, one there, so on and so forth. Now, as for the bottom, which was significantly more complicated just because of all these elevation changes. My original thought was to go one, two, three, four. Unfortunately, while it might not show up on film, there's a pretty good height difference there. So while if we're sitting a set of tires on here, I have no problem with it kind of coming down onto this. I just don't want it to be permanently secured there. So we called an audible, went one, two, three, four on the other corner. Now I had questions about this going into plastic. It seemed to work fine. It's actually very, very secure in there. It did try to pull through a little bit there when I went a little hard on it. I learned my lesson on this side. That side's much better. And just to assure this doesn't pull through because the way this is and the way this piece of foam here is, I cannot tighten a bolt all the way down in here or else it really distorts it here. I got a nylon spacer from the hardware store. That's gonna sit it up real nice. Now the rear is kind of where I really struggled. I was hoping to do right there, right there, something like that. But unfortunately, because this bolt sticking up and this just being kind of weird, those options did not work. I was hoping to go into here. Unfortunately, that did not work. I didn't want to add additional material to this car, but to do this right, unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to have to be. Put another rib nut right in there. That's going to be our final mounting point. That will give us six on the bottom, six on the top. I was actually planning on carpeting this stuff today as well, too. Uh, but unfortunately, it's getting a little bit late. Um, I don't think we're going to have time for it today. I can't say I'm too upset about that. One, we can take this for a drive, make sure it's not making any crazy noises, make sure we don't have to change anything. And two, probably more important, so now that we're not rushing to finish this today, I can get in here Monday and after work, guilt Alex into doing the carpet work for me. He won't be able to resist a chance to show off his upholstery skills. So I think we have a pretty good chance of getting him to do it. All right, we are in. It doesn't look horrible, uh, obviously. There's a bunch of gaps and whatnot, but that will be taken up much better when these things are fully carpeted. That's gonna give us a lot more room for air where you won't be able to see stuff like that. All right, guys, we are back on the Tesla rear seat delete. Unfortunately, it was absolute madness at the shop here. Didn't get to stay late. We were busy with actual work-related things. So the whole idea about Alex doing this and making it look beautiful because he is an upholstery genius, not working out. It's Saturday, I wanna get this thing done today. So substituting for Alex. Fernando, how much upholstery experience do you have? <laughs> zero. So between the two of us, that makes absolute zero upholstery experience. But it should be more entertaining in a video that has definitely not been entertaining. I guess there's nothing more to say. We're just gonna go ahead and wing this and uh, see how bad it turns out. We're only giving it one shot. We're not redoing all this cutting. However this turns out, that's what we're rocking with. I mean, you put glue in there, you spray glue on there, you put the, the board on it, and, and you're done, right? Like, <laughs> how hard can it be? See, open air vent before use, open the air vent. Okay. Like, step uh, one, easy. Okay. Yeah. That stuff is nasty. I wonder if it's supposed to like shake this first. That kind of looks gross, but. Probably. Too late. <laughs> Too late. There we go. There's some glue coming out, right? Uh-huh. That's all? I'm gonna, I think. It's straight and glued. Okay. Just have to figure out how to cut the edges and make them. I think we're gonna cut them and, and like spray glue on the bottom side. Okay. And fold over. As long as we can make it look good, you know. Hmm. Trim the double side. We're getting ready to run some more glue here and fold the remaining piece from the back side over it. No clue if it's gonna work, <laughs> but 
as a upholstery novice, this is the best I could come up with. I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking like, no, there's a very easy way to do that and you're not doing it, but. Now the one thing I have to be very careful not to do here. Cut your finger? No, <laughs> screw, screw the finger. I don't want to come around and cut through the front side of the carpet because oh. then we're screwed. I don't know, I think we're off to a good start here. Like this, this might come out way better than it should have. <laughs> I got careless. <laughs> <laughs> Just another day in the life of being an upholstery guy. It's kind of tough, right? Yeah, it's hard, hard work. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess we're ready to flip it over. Like, I don't know how okay. it's going to look, but. Okay. It's not bad. So the flaws aren't in the carpeting. The flaws are in like the, my cuts, like, and that's you know whatever, like, the, in the in the board that is. Yeah. Like, and that's. I'll take this. Okay. I'll take this every day of the week. Okay. So. It's not bad. Especially with we didn't know what we was doing. Exactly. All right, so this bottom piece is good. We just have to vacuum it, uh, but that actually came out really, really good. We'll see how it looks in the car. Obviously, I am very happy with how this came out, being that it is my first experience doing anything like this. It is heavier than I thought. We are going to weigh it as soon as we're done, but I think it might be the glue, all the material just adding up. I'm just waiting for this to set up for a second. I'm going to put it over and then go get ready to install this stuff. Um, hopefully, this one turns out as good. I'm not trying to get cocky now. You know what I mean? That's what happens. We'll start, yeah, that turned out great, and then this one will just screw all up, so... And my only regret here is that I wish I would have centered this a little more. Um, we might run tight on the excess on that side. Before we go any further, we have to go weigh these things. They're definitely not as light as I wanted them to be. Still lighter than the rear seats, and uh, we will be able to cut some carpet off this and not go eat down just a little more. I will say 12 pounds. Oh, I think uh, we're... It might, this back piece might be 12 pounds. Okay, that's not bad. Seven. Seven. And okay. again, this is like... we. We easily could have left the rear seats just out of it to, for maximum weight loss. But again, the point of this project is to have the car not degraded whatsoever. This will be lighter. Ha! Uh, so, so, Eleven. Well, well, I'm going to call that six because this was seven and some ounces. What? So I think you were spot yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So we're not off to a bad start here. Everything's fitting as it should. Uh, you guys really probably can't see anything in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this. And uh, we will show you it when we are done. All right, so we are done. Came out pretty good. Uh, everything fit really well. Uh, there was a couple little areas that I didn't leave enough excess carpet uh, or, you know, cut a little short, but we will have to do something about that. I have an idea. I think I can make it look really good, but for now, we just have it covered up with another piece of carpet. Again, I think it came out really, really well. Uh, that pillar over there isn't clamping down properly. I will have to address that. And this is the area that I messed up on. I had enough excess there. I misjudged exactly how short I could cut it once I pulled it tight up this way. I think what I'll end up doing is cutting this straight across, having a stitched portion there. Alex is definitely doing that part, and it will look like it was kind of meant to be that way, I suppose. But for now, this is going to have to do it. Kind of disappointed in that, but whatever. But I'm really, really thrilled with the way this thing turned out. The fact that we did this without any experience yeah. doing this kind yeah, of yeah, stuff, yeah. we didn't know how to handle the glue. Uh-huh, that's, that's um, true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. The, the glue job worked good. Like, that's great. Yeah. Um, let's see. And honestly, everything else I'm pretty thrilled about. Obviously, we added 12 pounds back into the car, but what are you going to do? Other than leaving it completely open, it's just how it's going to be. Me and Fernando are going to take a test drive real quick because when this thing was not covered up, it was loud. It was radly. It was annoying. I have a feeling that now that there's carpet in it, it's going to be dead quiet. I mean, this not as quiet as a rear seat, but that's pretty good, right? Like, it's not like any. No, I mean, it like, sounds you, pretty you, quiet. You should have heard it before. It was, it was, oh. it was bad. I was, I was almost, almost regretting this. Really? But, I mean, this is this is all I could ask for. Now, we do still have to check and see if there's a good amount of motor noise because it sounded awesome when there was no rear seat in it. The motor was loud. It's, oh. <laughs> I loved it. I have a feeling it's not going to be that way, but let's see. Yeah. Oh. And, a lot, and a lot of it went away. I, I mean, but now you hear like the G. 
Well, that's how okay. it was, but it was oh, like okay. almost like loud, loud. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so I guess I'm not gonna get to have fun with you know my whiny Tesla anymore, <laughs> but whatever. Straight pipe Tesla anymore. Yeah, essentially. It, yes, it was effectively <laughs> buying a new car and hacking the mufflers off it. That's what I did to this thing. <laughs> it works, sounds good, and uh, looks good too. So this is a big old win. But that is gonna be it for this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you stuck with this video this long, props to you. You're obviously a numbers nerd like I am. But we will be back with some more fun content for this soon. I'm working on getting my time trial license for this getting into the group where I can actually go try to set some, you know, fast lap times with this thing. We do have more track crosses coming up this summer. We're going to hit some auto crosses and any other fun events we can find to do with this thing. So if you did enjoy it, like, subscribe, share, tell a friend. I would appreciate all that stuff, and I will see you guys next time.